So when you look at Venezuela's economy right now, the best way to think of the Bolivar, think of it as an ice cube. And the second you get that currency in your hand, it's going to start melting and it's going to start losing its value because of hyperinflation. This crisis threatens to get a whole lot worse before it gets better. It's gone from the richest nation in Latin America to what is now a primitive barter system. I think most people you ask know that there's a crisis in Venezuela, but I don't think the average person understands the depth in which uh, the crisis is reached. What we're seeing now is a disaster state. Nicolas Maduro. Oh. President Nicolas Maduro. President Nicolas Maduro. If you think about Maduro, he's really a leader who's sitting on gunpowder, just this big mountain of gunpowder. And he's able to spread water on it to keep it from igniting. And he does that by maintaining loyalty from the military and keeping certain people rich and keeping support from other countries. But eventually, and whether it's warfare on the Colombian-Venezuelan border or some sort of an invasion, there's going to be a spark, a meaningful spark. Oil was discovered in Venezuela in the early 20th century. And prior to that, they had a strong economy. They had gold, they had diamonds, they were one of the leading exporters of cocoa and coffee. The beaches were beautiful, so there was a tourism industry. But when oil was discovered, it was a gold rush. They just went all in on oil. When you only have uh, oil as your chief export, 98% of the exports that come out of Venezuela are oil. You are uh, handcuffed to that commodity. So when we see volatility in the oil market, what we see is the overall collapse again and again of the economy in Venezuela. President Maduro re-denominated the currency. He basically lobbed five zeros off of the value of, of the currency. The whole idea, though, is, is absolutely ridiculous because you're talking about a currency that has no value and just continues to spike like a hockey stick if you look at a chart. The only thing that really has value in Venezuela is anything but the Bolivar. So whether it's dollars, whether it's euros, whether it's just buying uh, random goods that you'll put on your own shelf, you're going to do much better with those items than you would having stacks and stacks of Bolivars because they're going to lose their value in a matter of minutes. With inflation rising that quickly, and with a country trying to print money uh, in, in a way to keep up, there is no way for people to have paper money to afford goods. So you can't go to a store with these bundles and bundles and bundles of cash. There are no goods on the shelves. You're living meal to meal. Every fridge is empty. So it's a hustle, it's a scramble, it's a panic. In order to get treated at a Venezuelan hospital, a patient has to bring their own light bulb because just like anything else, a light bulb is a good, it has value, and people will come to the hospital and steal them. So if you're gonna get operated on, um, it's good if the doctors can, can see you know, what they're doing. So in order to get admitted, you have to bring that light bulb and screw it in yourself. You have a system of government that doesn't prosecute criminals. Cops would rather just shoot someone in the street and have a pile of corpses as their own form of justice rather than trusting the legal system, because it really isn't a legal system. The day-to-day -day life is terrifying, but people stay. If not because they don't have the resources to leave and because if you want to get a passport, you're going to be in line for days, um, there's a lot of pride there. You know, a lot of them want to stay to hopefully see things get better. Right now, you've got 300 billion barrels of oil in the ground. Call that, in a bull market, a trillion dollars worth of oil just sitting there. That's 20% of the world's proven reserves. That's more oil than any other country has. And they can't get it out of the ground because the rigs don't work. But let's assume for a second we had a magic button and we pressed it and overnight all of those rigs were functioning properly again. And that oil was ready to be extracted. Well, you need to get people there to work the rigs and there's no transportation system. I mean, it's, it, it, the problems are just, Unbelievable. Their crisis is brought on by ineptitude and corruption and the fact that they are sitting literally on the solution and they have no way to get it. I do think that there could be change, positive change that could come. It's going to take time, but the resources are there. I mean, this is a gorgeous country. Venezuelans love their country. 
They love their people and who they are. If they could present a, a unified front with one leader and maybe write a constitution that isn't essentially a Wikipedia page that's changed at the will of the president, and they could start to resemble uh, a government and an economy that isn't totally corrupt, and then spend the money to get the oil back online, there could be a lot of positive change that could happen very quickly. And then with all of that, you could see young Venezuelans who have left return to the country. And bringing with them education and hope and inspiration, and you could see a positive domino effect for these people that frankly deserve a shot at happiness and a shot at life.